Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Roller Team Auto Roller 747. Located underneath the driver's seat is a battery isolation switch. So if you were leaving the vehicle unattended, parked up on the driveway or in the storage yard for a while and you didn't want a 12 volt power drain, what you can do is turn this key to the up position, 12 o'clock, and it will stop any power being drained if you've left any 12 volt appliances on from the leisure battery. But remember, you've got to turn the key to the, to the passenger side to then work the inside of the vehicle on 12 volt. So as we start the walk around on the driver side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is your boiler flue. So make sure this is obstruction free at all times and this indicates where the boiler is on the vehicle. So the boiler will be behind here. So that's where you would drain it down from the winter, which I'll show you when we're inside. But do make sure that's obstruction free because it's allowing the gases out from when the heater is on electric gas. Underneath here you do have your so this is anything that you have used so if you've put anything down a plug hole such as your showering water your hand basin water and your dishes water all goes to a separate hole in the tank and then when you're finished on your site or you're on a super site you'd have a grid next to you and you'll just simply pull this lever back and it'll drain off the water in the winter it's very important that you drain this off as you wouldn't want it to freeze in the hole in the tank below the vehicle This is your fresh water filler. So on the keys, you've got the, the habitation key there, which locks and unlocks the blue cap. Go and buy yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe ends, as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. Hose pipe in there until it overflows, or you can see on board how much water you've got on board on the main control panel, which will go up on increments on the control panel above the habitation door. So that's your fresh water filler. Then you get onto your toilet. So cassette toilet. So ensure that the blade on the bottom bowl of the toilet is closed, which is the grey lever. Then what you'll be able to do, once that's closed, you'll be able to get this cassette out. Should it be open, you'll not be able to get the cassette out. Lift the blue handle, slide it out. You then take your cassette to your waste disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block. Remove the cap, press the button and empty. Once you've emptied it out, there's normally a tap there, put some water in, put the cap back on and give it a rinse and tip out again. Then you've got a 120ml cap for your liquid, so if you're using the liquid form, 120ml of either the blue or the green into here and it's good to go back into the vehicle. If you're using the chemical, in the tablet form, you put this in completely dry, open the blade on the toilet, flush a pint of water into the cassette and then follow by a tablet which is in the sachet form, in the cellophane, behind it and that will break down into the liquid but the tablets are easier to store than the bottled liquids. But ask your site which tablet or chemical they prefer to use when booking your site. At the back here you've got your garage. This is your garage storage area. So you've got your carpet, some infill cushions, and some storage in there. And some tethering reels so you can hook things down when you've got larger items in your garage, which is just your under storage of your back lounge. Come to the back end of the vehicle, you've got your high level brake light and reverse camera. Then you do have a four bike rack on this vehicle. So you put your bike's wheels on here, you strap them through the spokes to tie them down to the rails and then put these through the crossbars to hold on the top of the bike. So you've got first, second, third and fourth bike being the longest arm. And then what I would recommend is put some securities for bike lock around all four bikes or how many bikes you've got on to stop them being stolen if the vehicle was left unattended. Same on this side, so your garage, you've got nothing much in this side, same storage. External gas point, 
pinch. So if you want to connect a Kadak, an external barbecue, an awning heater, pop that on, the, there's a bullfinch connection which goes on there. You would then get some gas hosing and a Jubilee clip to connect to your Kadak or external barbecue or awning heater and this will run off the main bottles on board instead of carrying a spare. Mains hookup point. So get your hookup lead, lift the collar and expose the three ends. Slide that over there. Hook the vehicle up first, then the power source and do it in reverse when unhooking the vehicle. But when unhooking, there's a small little black clip there that you push down before unhooking the vehicle. You've got your two fridge vents, your awning light and your awning. LPG, liquid petroleum gas, this is a gas locker. And in here you can fit two bottles. So this is our six kilogram test bottle. So once you get the bottle on board, you'd use the straps behind it to stop the bottle on board so it's secure. To connect the pigtail to the bottle, it's a left hand thread, so opposite threads with it being gas, and then just all you need to do is hand tighten, so no need for a spanner or an adjustable wrench. And then you just turn on and off from the bottle. So it's clockwise to open, anti-clockwise to close. And always make sure it's shut before you travel, as it's safer if you were involved in any accident. Your gas is secure, so there's gonna be no further risk. Diesel filler which opens with the main ignition key. Tire pressures on the side of the door. So you've got five bar on the front, which is 72.3 PSI, and five and a half on the back, which is 79.5 PSI. Your weight plate's just on the step there, so it's three and a half ton gross vehicle weight. If you were to put a tow bar on, you can tow two ton behind the motorhome, so your train weight can't exceed five and a half ton. Engine battery lives underneath the floor. Tool kit's underneath here, so this just slides out, this lifts off. It's got a jackney brace and a tow eye in there, and then your bonnet releases on the side of the dashboard. Having a quick look underneath here, you've got all your fluids this side to so screen wash, this lifts off and you've got your power steering fluid, radiator coolant and brake fluid. Engine oil and dipstick, paint code for the blank or white is 249 which is this sticker here. Earth for giving or receiving a jump start. And then just behind the passenger headlight, lift this collar up and there is the positive contact for giving or receiving a jump start. Above the habitation door is your main control panel. So if you're hooked up, you'll get this little indication here, which looks like a hookup lead, which means you're receiving 240 volt. If you didn't have that, you will just have 12 volt off your leisure battery. You have your master switch here, which will obviously turn on 240 or 12, depending if you're hooked up or not. So it comes up off, just press it, that'll turn it on. Then on this side, on the right hand side, you've got battery one, which looks like a truck, which is the Fiat Ducato carb battery reading. Battery two of the trailer, which is the leisure battery, ha ha leisure battery, habitation battery. So it'll give a false reading there, 14.4 volts. Once you take the hook about, it will then give a true reading of what the battery's actually sitting at. And then you've got water at the top. So this is, Blue, 66%, fresh, click again, R1, zero, because we have just opened the waste outside. On this side, you've got the inside temperature. Then you've got your lights, so this is the master switch for the lights, then they all are individually switched around the vehicle. Owning light, and then the pump, which you've got to have on if you're using any water appliance so if you're using a tap toilet or shower you've got to have the pump on to pressurize the water otherwise you'll get whatever's left in the lines and it'll simply feed out to lock the door you just lift this until it shows red which means it's locked from the outside as soon as you go for the handle below the door will open and you've got a fly screen on there And then as we're on control panels, I'll do your heating and hot water, which is here. 
So this is your Truma CP control panel. There's loads of videos on these on YouTube, so if you ever wanna just refer back to this without watching this whole video, you can just put Truma CP control panel in. So to turn it off and on, you just press and hold the button. This is kind of like the standby stage, it's operating, but to get into the menu, you need to just press enter. So you've got a motor home with the thermometer in there in the far left this is the temperature of the inside of the motorhome that you want it to be highest of 30 all the way down to off once you're happy you will just press enter and then you have programmed the thermostat to 30 degrees moving on you've got a thermometer in water this is how hot you want your water to be so should you have water on board you can then put the water on if you didn't it would be like boiling the kettle with no water in you'll burn the element out in the boiler so you'd have it on off if that was the case if there was water on board you can have it on eco which is 40 degrees of heating your water you can have it on hot which is 60 degrees of heating your water or you can have it on boost boost will turn off the heating and prioritize the water first so for this we'll just say hot normally what you do with the water is you'd use eco for showering hot for dishes and boost if you wanted to prioritize the water first moving on you've got a gas bottle and some electric symbols there so this is what energy source you want off the vehicle to heat the water or the vehicle so you've got gas which you'd use if you're wild camping and you had no electric hookup you'd have mixture one which is one kilowatt of electric and gas combined you've got mixture two which is two kilowatts of electric and gas together you'd use this more in the winter if you're in desperate need to heat the, wa the water or the vehicle and then you've got electric on one kilowatt and electric on two so you would use these two more if you are on a site depending on what the amperage they give you through the hookah bleed it's depending on if you use electric on one or electric on two kilowatts most camping and caravan sites you can use electric on two little cl site you may have to use electric on one and with the mixture setting if it if you were away in the winter and you wanted to rapidly heat the water or the vehicle use mix two give it about 10 15 minutes and then put it back onto electric so that you're not wasting all of your gas in the top right you've got the fan so this is how high you want the setting of the 12 volt assisted fan so you've got eco which will make it less quiet for sleeping and use a little smaller feed of 12 volt or you've got high which you can use if you are hooked up and you wanted to really push the heat around the vehicle in the bottom left You've got a timer, so you can time it to come on and off. In the middle there, you've got the time that it actually is. So you can set that, depending if the clocks go back and forward. And then you've got a spanner in the bottom right hand corner. So if you get a warning triangle, you can go to reset, click on it. It'll come a preset, click again, and it will completely restart this control panel so you'll have to go in and set the temperature the water the energy source and the fan speed again to then make the heating and hot water work in your kitchen area you've got three gas burners but you will need some sort of match or lighter to spark the hob so they have three lit gas rings allow these to cool before you put the glass lid down so turn them off allow them to cool after use before you do put the cooker hood down because you can smash this glass with the heat and then below you've got your Dometic styled fridge freezer so this is a three-way fridge with freezer box so you turn on and off here then you've got three sources so you've got mains electric when hooked up gas when while camping and battery when you are running so when you're driving what you can do is you can put on the battery and should it 
have already have been pre-chilled. Oh. If you're moving from site to site or you're moving from home to site, put on the battery setting and it'll make this a giant cool okay, box and keep all your door. shopping nice and fresh. So you'd use mains hookup if you're on site or if you're lucky enough to keep it's this at home, pre-chill it oh. on your driveway the day or two before you go away, put the shopping in the night before. Allow that all chill to temperature because the battery setting will only work if it's been pre-chilled. Don't expect to just pop that on with all your shopping in and expect it to be cold when you get the side because that isn't gonna happen. You've got to pre-chill it on either electric or gas and then obviously you would use your gas if you're wild camping because you'd have no other source so you'd just click it and that'll light on gas and obviously the battery setting when the engine's running it'll send a 12 volt feed from the alternator to the fridge to keep it nice and fresh so if you've got shopping on board that's when you would use the battery setting it's not off your leisure battery it's off your vehicle battery when the engine is running temperature this side so when pre-chilling it at home before you do put your shopping in you probably want it on five and then once you put your shopping in you probably want to just turn it down to either four or three just so it doesn't give the shopping fridge burn and what you've put in doesn't go off because sometimes it can be too strong the temperature of the fridge and it'll make things go off and then you've got a reset button there should you need it when you packing the van up and you're not using it for a couple of months i.e. in the winter or you're just simply not using it it's very important that you clean your fridge out take all the items out give it a wipe down with some anti back some Dettol whatever and then what you want to do is you don't want to shut the door because it forms an airtight seal so on the side of the light there's a little lug push it slide these two pins will pop out and what they'll do is they'll stop the door from shutting on itself and it'll allow air circulation in and out of the fridge to stop mould and bacteria growing. Also in your kitchen you do have your oven grill. So just hold the control in until the thermocouple gets warm and you can release and it'll stay lit. And then below you do have your oven. You may want to remove your oven shelves and grill pan when traveling as it can cause a bit of vibration and rattling. And then underneath the oven you've got your gas taps. These red taps are your gas taps. These are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced. Any problems with gas, turn the bottle off to be safe. And next to it you do have your trips for your main 240 volts. So you've got your RCD and your MCBs there. So if you trip the Vehicle out with a hairdryer or a kettle, try here before you try your main site. Got storage underneath your wardrobe with the cutlery drawing, storage above, and then you do have a little light. So, as long as the lights are turned on on the panel, this will come on and off. And there is a three pin mains plug. In the wardrobe area, you've got your table and you've got an extension there which clips on to the table at the front which we'll go through in a moment and your hanging reel. At the back you've got storage along the top and all of the cupboards. But here is your Vision Plus amplifier for your TV aerial so if you were struggling to get a signal you can just control this little button here min and max and get it to the right amplify the signal and get it right for your TV picture because sometimes if it's too strong it'll pixelate and if it's too weak it'll pixelate also so you may just have to have a fiddle about with that until you get the right picture to open the skylight, all you need to do is wind and it'll open like it has there and wind it closed before you start travelling all your windows and skylights must be closed before you start driving fly screen and a blackout blind 
You've got light switches all over for, so this light switch here does the lights on the floor, your night lights. And this one here does the light above the lounge. To make your bed, so to make the U-shaped lounge into a bed, if you lift this cushion here, you'll be able to put your hand in, pull the lats out, slide them along until they hit this here, and then that is it in situ, and you would just use your back rests for these parts here. We then go into the middle. So it is quite a snug fit for the lounge. So you need to put your cushions in nice and tight. There, and then you turn the other side, because they're a leatherette kind of cushion, you need to turn them upside down and you get the flatter surface to sleep on. And there you do have one large double bed at the back. In the washroom, you've got your shower screens which just tie back there, so when travelling make sure they are tied back. Skylight that just you pinch and push up with the blind on. Hanging reel for wet coat, wet towels, wet clothing. As this is quite a small space in the van, with the heating on, it is heated in the bathroom so if you've got anything that needs to dry, hang them up in here and they'll dry in no time. The shower head would then clip onto here if you are going to use the shower in the vehicle. But when winter rising, it's very important that you unscrew the shower hose from the head, pull the hose right the way out, and allow the hose to lie in the shower tray with the mixer taps open throughout the vehicle to stop any water from coiling up in this pipe or in the pipes behind the taps. So that, you just push that down the neck of the tap and there you have hot water hot water's coming through nice and hot there and operate your toilet make sure the pump's on of course for water press the button at the back which is your fresh water flush flush your toilet first which lubricates the blade and the seal on the blade then you'd use the blade handle, slide this to the right, open the, the hatch, which is the blade, use the toilet, flush the toilet, and then close the blade. If you were wanting to use any bowl cleaners, put them in a spray bottle, spray the bowl for, for, for cleanliness and fragrance, and then flush after. On the back here, you'll see a green light that means the cassette is empty it's good to use that'll slowly start to go red until it goes to a solid red which means it's full it needs to be emptied and topped up with chemical handy cabinet there where you put your toilet rolls and then your windows you just push in open push it out push it out all the way bring it back in secure the window and you do have fly screen and a blackout blind and then clip in the middle to do part of the two. So this shows the double dinette conversion to a double bed. So using the table, remove it off the top rail which you'd lift 90 degrees and lift it down on the bottom rail so there's the same bar like that just underneath. And then what you would do is you'd use the table extension which can be found in the wardrobe. Just slides in there. You drop the leg by pressing the button and it halves in two. And then you would use these by pulling them out the side. So there's one on the front, one on the back. Wedge the cushion in there. Then you would just push it back in to keep it nice and secure. So these two cushions can be found in the garage or the wardrobe, same with this one which goes on top of this table to form the double bed. Lifting the cushion off your rear two travelling seats in the back and lifting this, unscrewing the red nut of the tank, 
you'll see there's two white handles in there. If you lift them up, this is your fresh water tank, sort of drain it off in the winter. It's very important that you pull them off or if you've taken on contaminated water, you're simply not using the vehicle for a while, drain the tank by just lifting, putting your hand in and lifting those white levers up and it'll drain off directly out underneath the chassis. Underneath the side, facing seat, the small one when you come in to the left of the habitation door is where you'll find the locations of all your fuses. So they're all listed here, what does what, so it would be a good idea to carry some spare blade fuses with you just in case one fuse does go, you can replenish the fuse and solve the issue. So underneath your travelling seat, which is directly behind the driver's seat, is the location of your boiler. So your boiler heats the vehicle and heats the water, so there's a 10 litre water container inside the boiler. In the winter, when you're not using the vehicle, it's very important that you drain it down because if the vehicle was to get too cold and it was to freeze outside, the 10 litres of water would freeze in the cylinder and crack it and then it would void your warranty as it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle down from frost damage. So if you just look behind this strut here, you'll see that there's a little blue nib on an anti-frost control device. So this should automatically drop the water at three degrees, but don't rely on it. Check it yourself. So when it's front pointing from the cab to the back of the van, like it is now, it's holding 10 liters of water. What you need to do is point it across the van. There's a little button that'll pop off on the side of it down here. So you'll turn it that way the button at the bottom will pop out and it will drain the 10 litres of water directly out underneath the chassis. Then when you come to reuse it, you'd of course have to shut it but leave it open during the time you've got it in storage or stood on the drive not being used in the winter. And then when you do come to reuse it, you turn it front to back Get your hand round the back and push the button in on the bottom of the device. Shut all the taps throughout the motorhome because you would leave all the taps open. Put the plugs back in your fresh water, which is on the opposite side. Shut the waste. Come in, fill it with water via a hose pipe. Come in, put the control panel on, put the pump on. Go to the cold side of the tap first, you'll get automatic cold water because it's dispensing it from underneath the tank via the pump to the tap. Then when you go to the hot side, it's transferring it from the fresh water tank via the pump into the boiler. So what it does is it cough splutters, make all sorts of noises because it's filling the 10 litre cylinder up and pushing the air out. Once you get a free flow of hot water from the hot side, on the hot side of the tap you get a free flow of water it is then primed and you would do each individual tap until you had a prime system then you're good to go until you had to winterize again for the upcoming winter and then above your lounge at the front you've got your drop down bed so you just press and hold the button keep your finger on it You may have to remove the headrest first. So remove them, especially that one. And then it'll stop at that height and it'll ma make you bed up underneath. Or you can stop it at any height, should that be too claustrophobic. You can just stop it further up. Ladder on you here. And then you've got nets, as you can see, there's nets on that side. You can have a net on this side and there's a light there as well. So you'd have your heads this end, feet on the shorter end. And then take your pillows off, but leave your bed on and you can push it back up. But you will have to have the lights on on the control panel to operate the bed. Otherwise you get no power to it because it's just how they've wired it at the factory. 
The carb that I'm going to insert here, which goes through the same controls, has Remus carb lines. This model doesn't, the 747. It has curtains and silver screens which can go on from the outside. So just remember that, that the Remus carb lines aren't applicable to this model. It was an extra that wasn't fitted. But it does have the curtains and the silver screens. So now in the cab, to the right of the driver you do have your handbrake and then on the door you've got your electric driver and passenger windows and electric mirrors. So you would adjust which mirror you want from here and you've got two on each side, the top and the blind spot. And then the black, the driver and passenger door windows out on an evening. Pinch and slide your Remus car blinds and you'll be able to black them out and then you put the same on the windscreen so pinch and slide they'll just clip together on a magnetic strip and then coming down beside the driver's side you've got your headlight adjustment and your rear fog lights you wipe a stalk with your trip computer which goes through the screen here tell your range your trip distance, your average consumption, your instant consumption, your average speed, your traveling time, and then you've got trip A and trip B. All your steering wheel controls which work the radio, your headlights and indicators, and you've got off. On the top you've got your cruise control where you just push up once you get to the desired speed. Push up the speed up, pull down to slow down, cancel on the stalk, cancel on the brake, resume on the end of the stalk. And then at the bottom, you've got going up slowly, you've got your speed limiter. Pushing up a little bit harder, goes up in fives on the speed limiter. And then you've got the kick down function so you can throw the accelerator to override the speed limit should you need to for emergencies. So the speed limiter will be there, lightly on the throttle, floor it and it'll override the limiter. Six speed manual gearbox with lifting the collar in reverse but you've always got the camera on on the back so it's, no matter if you're in first or you're in sixth that's always on traction control hill descent control is pretty much useless on a manual hazards locks the cab on an evening and you've got your heated mirrors USB and 12 volt for charging purposes only you've got an auxiliary and a USB there for charging through the head unit. Temperature on the outside ring. Fan speed must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work, which is this button here. And then on the outside ring on this side, you've got your distribution. And then on the inside, you've got your circulation, whether you're bringing fresh air in or you're recirculating air. Fiat head unit. FM AM radio, you can press 1 to 3 to save or you can press all and you can save 12 of your favourite FM channels. Media is obviously CD, Bluetooth audio, a USB or auxiliary. Navigation. So navigate to, put your address in there. So you can punch in the postcode. If you ever take it abroad, you just need to click on that Eng that UK flag and put it to the country you're going in and you can put your French coordinates or your Spanish coordinates in there. If you're going to set the home function up, don't set it to your house. Set it to the street before or just a location where you can drive to and then you know the distance from there to the house like the back of your hand because you wouldn't want to drive put your postcode in there and then someone in Nicky Motor Home to know where you live connect your phone you press phone settings add device find you connect on your phone make sure the pins match press pair on here pair on your phone then it'll ask you if you want to download your phone book press allow and it'll sync your contacts into here so you can scroll through them and then ring whoever you need to you can go to more and you can look at the trips on here instead of through the screen should you wish you've got a compass and you've got the outside temperature and a clock and then you turn on and off here volume and you've got settings in the top right 
glove box, he didn't include glove box by the air conditioning, so if you wanted to keep small bottles of water, sweets, chocolate in there with the aircon on, they'll stay lovely and cold when you're on the road.